Since the 1930s, Disney animators have put their pencils to paper in service of the idea that the greatest inspiration often comes from the magic of nature. Walt Disney himself understood the importance of spending time around animals, studying their behavior and personalities in order to create realistic characters and dynamic storylines. This meeting of the human and animal worlds sparked a legacy of storytelling that has shaped our relationship with animals and conservation forever. Today, we invite you to become a part of that legacy as our own Disney artists help you learn to sketch characters inspired by the very animals found here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Get your pencils ready because here comes our animation artist now. Yes, at least three of you are excited about that. Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Now, before we get started, it's really important for you guys to remember that this is a classroom. So, if you need anything at all, if you get frustrated and need coloring sheets or crayons, or you break a pencil, or you need to leave to use the restroom, or just leave in general, what do you do in a classroom if you need anything? Raise your hand. A raise your hand. Yes. So, just raise your hand, and I've got cast members and friends all around the room that can come help you guys out uh, with whatever you guys need. So important, raise your hand if you need anything. Now without further ado, uh, we are actually promoting a brand new show on Disney Plus. It's gonna come out in a couple of weeks called A Real Bugs Life. And it takes you into the real world of bugs. So uh, we're gonna give you a little preview on the screen. So take a look at the screen. Hi everyone, and welcome to the animation experience at Conservation Station here at Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park, where today it's all about exploring and celebrating the wonderful life of bugs. That's right, bugs are amazing. In fact, did you know that a bee's wings can beat over 200 times a second? Ants can lift up to 20 times their own body weight, and there are more than 1 million different species of bugs? Now, National Geographic invites you to discover even more about these incredible insects in a series of remarkable adventures in A Real Bug's Life. These are epic tales on a miniature scale inspired by the world of Disney and Pixar's A Bug's Life and the beloved adventures of Flick, Dot, Slim, and Dim. And that's who you're going to learn how to draw today, one of these special characters. So, happy drawing. Have an amazing day at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And be sure to check out National Geographic's A Real Bug's Life, streaming January 24th on Disney+. Plus. All right, so, uh, we're drawing Heimlich the Cat Pillar. And we're starting out with guidelines. And uh, guidelines, of course, are there to keep everybody on the same page in hand-drawn animation. So, this guy's thousand drawings line up, this <coughs> guy's thousand drawings. The whole thing looks like it was drawn by one person, rather than the thousand people you see in the credits at the end. <laughs> so, guidelines are really, really important. Of course, Heimlich is from Bugs Life. Bugs Life is the second Pixar movie. It came out in 1998. Pixar, of course, are the pioneers of computer animation. But I just don't have time for you guys to pull out laptops and have me teach you how to connect vector dots to together to create a three-dimensional skeleton and then put, create layers of skin and things to go over the top of that and then move that character around a digital plane of existence like a marionette. I just don't have time for that. It's literally a four-year bachelor's yeah. degree in animation. So you guys can go off and spend your hundred grand on that later. <laughs> and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to break him down as if he was hand-drawn. Now, if you guys have ever seen drawn versions of Pixar characters, since Pixar characters are designed on the computer, <laughs> They don't always look that great. Um, so we're going to stylize him a bit, make him look a little bit like a coloring sheet so that he uh, pops off the page on our flat paper. Um, so you can see the whole thing right here. We've got all these circles there for you. Everybody see that? No? Okay. Only me? Well, I'm going to zoom in now so you know where to start. We're going to go way up here to that top circle. All right. So we're going to focus on this space right in here in between the top of this line and this line. And I'm just going to sketch in some ovals. So keep your lines nice and sketchy because this is a sketching class. It's not a finished product or to hang in a gallery class. So I'm going to put one right there and one over here. 
And the key to success in this class is to keep it light till it feels right. Why? Because you don't have erasers. I don't have an eraser either. See? No erasers. Uh, the good thing is, is that erasers do still exist. They have not gone anywhere. You probably have one in your drawer at home or in an aisle at Walmart. So if you do make a mistake, all you have to do is just draw a good line over the top of it or next to it, wherever you need to put it to make yourself feel better. At some point in your life, you will find an eraser. And when that time comes, if you still care, you can pull this old drawing out and erase to your heart's content. But until then, I want you to treat this like it's the first day of kindergarten, not like you're about to present your doctoral thesis, and just try to have fun. All right? While you're in here, just pretend, if you will, pretend, use your imagination and pretend you're on vacation at Disney World <laughs> and act like it. All right? I have no authority to hire you, so it don't matter how much you impress me with your drawing, I can't do anything for you. You're just going to have to have fun and enjoy yourself. All right. So he's got his eyes up here. Now, these characters in Bug's Life are very anthropomorphized, meaning they are given human attributes. Because caterpillars, they don't have human eyes. Uh, they have six sets of simple eyes, just little tiny eyes, that uh, can, only, can only recognize light and dark. They can't even focus on anything. Um, but that would be a little terrifying, right? If you had like this these giant bug face on your screen and you're like, come here, little Timmy. Watch this, this adorable little ah, giant bug face. Yeah, that'd be terrifying, right? So we anthropomorphize the characters, cartoon them up. And uh, we're going to give him human iris, which is going to be a little circle right in here. And another one right over here. And inside the little human iris, you draw a little human pupil. Just like that. Iris and pupil, just like a person. Not like a bug. Now their eyes do change uh, when they uh, go to cocoon. And they come out and they completely liquefy, because that's what happens with yeah. caterpillars. They completely liquefy and become a completely different creature entirely, come out as a butterfly. They have compound eyes, which is like a bulb with thousands of eyes in it, so they can see all the way around them. But as caterpillars, all they can do is recognize light and dark. I'm going to add a teeny tiny little ball of light on the inside of that pupil, so we know he lives in a world that has light, because light reflects off of our eyes. We want our animated characters to look like they're alive, you put light in their eyes. And then I'm going to fill in that little pupil right in there. Just like so. Now, we as humans, we can show a huge array of emotions, right? And what do we use to show a huge array of emotions? Eyebrows, exactly, yes. Now, are caterpillars well known for having eyebrows? You ever look at a caterpillar on a tree and you're like, oh, wow, that caterpillar looks shocked. No. Um, but once again, we need to be able to see the emotions on these characters' faces. So we anthropomorphize them, and eyebrows are really, really powerful. I could put eyebrows on this plant over here and make an angry plant. That's how powerful eyebrows are. So he's a happy-go-lucky guy. I'm going to draw a little curve right above that eye. It looks like a little pinball paddle. I'll raise the other one up a little bit on the other side, giving us a little, little expression, like so. All right, I'm going to back up a little bit now. Um, he needs to be able to smell things. Uh, how do you think bugs smell things? Anybody know? Yeah, antenna, exactly. They don't have noses. So... He's got his antenna right up here, and that's what these little blue guidelines up at the top are. So I'm just going to trace over those so we know that they're there. And we're going to make them look um, kind of like little uh, batons, uh, little hot dogs. And I'll pull this line down and curve all the way down to where this line touches the circle. Just like that. And then I'll pull this around the other side, just inside the circle, and round it off to connect. Like so. And it's the same thing over here. Okay. So I'm going to start way up here. Curve down just inside of the circle above the eyebrow. And connect it all together. Just a little hot dog sticking off the top of his head. Just like so. All right. We're going to keep 
move him down. <laughs> We're gonna give him his mouth. Um, caterpillars don't have mouths like we have. Um, they actually, they have chewing mouth parts. And all caterpillars do is eat. That's what they do. They are just gaining that energy so that they can make a cocoon and become butterflies, right? So all they do is eat. And that's the same with Heimlich, except Heimlich eats things like cheeseburgers. Um, <laughs> not really what caterpillars actually eat. Caterpillars eat one type of plant, generally butterfly caterpillars. Whatever you see a caterpillar on, that's the plant <laughs> that they're eating. If you move that caterpillar off of that plant and move it to a different plant, then no more caterpillar. Uh, because that caterpillar needs to be eating that exact plant that it is sitting on. So we're going to draw a little curve for his big chubby cheeks. I'm just going to go down from the side of the eyebrow right down here and draw a little curve through that blue guideline. Just like that. Over here to the left, in between all of these blue guidelines, I'm just going to float a little parenthesis. Just like that. And then I'm going to draw a curve which hits this blue guideline and curves up to the middle, the top of his mouth. We're giving him a human mouth so he can form words and talk and use his little German accent that he has. And so I'm going to go a little bit down this cheek on the left and I'm going to curve down and through that blue guideline. Then over on the right, I'm going to start way up here by where we have this line for the mouth, and I'm just going to curve down and swing it. Like so. There's his mouth. He's got a big tongue. I got a little tongue just right in there. And if you want to, you can shade in the inside of the mouth. That's, shading is always something you can say for later if you've fallen behind at all. You can just do a contour drawing. Uh, contour drawing, if you don't know what that is, that's first day of art class 101. That's the outline of something without any details. All right, he needs a chin. He actually has three of them. Yes. We are going to start with chin number one. Chin number one is going to be halfway between the mouth and the circle. It's going to be a little curve, just like that. Now we're going to go up in between the antenna. I'm just going to trace over that circle. I'm going to go behind the antenna and follow this down. I'm going to web this together just by kind of curving out to that bottom circle. His cheeks are actually bigger than this circle on this side. So I'm going to curve this out. And I'm going to create a crescent moon shape hugging the side of that circle, and it's going to run right back into the bottom of the circle again. Let's pull this in a little bit, curve down, create his second chin, which is going to hit the bottom of that blue guideline, and curve back up. Over on the right, I'm going to go from behind the antenna. Follow that circle down. I'm going to curve into the inside of the circle. Cut through that just a little bit. Then I'll follow the side of the circle down and run into that chin. Finish that off. All right. This is just the inside of his face. I need to get the outside of his face and give him his third chin. <coughs> so, I'm going to start way up here by this right antenna, and I'm going to draw a little triangle which goes up and just runs into the other antenna. A little tiny triangle. So I'm going to follow that through behind that antenna. I'm going to stay close to the face, and I'm just going to curve around, kind of staying parallel to his head. And then I'm going to curve around. Underneath that chin, here's his third chin, right there. <laughs> Pull this around and create a little roll. As soon as we leave the circle, I'm going to curve around and run back and create that little roll. Just like that. Now, 
Now, he has color separations on him. He's green at the top and yellow at the bottom. And um, in computer animation, you can just really easily just kind of fade the colors from green to yellow. But being hand-drawn, we're going to draw a line to show where the colors change. So just below this blue guideline, I'm going to draw a little curve. He is a uh, circus thug. He's a clown in the circus. And he actually has his little um, red clown nose up on the back of his head. <laughs> uh, up uh, technically, I guess, by the things he smells with, which are his antenna. Um, so we're going to start up here by the antenna, and I'm going to draw just a little tiny curve right there. It's going to follow behind the antenna and curve back down. And that gives us his clown nose up on the back of his head. <laughs> now, Bugs Life came out in 1998. Uh, it is the second uh, computer animated film ever. Pretty cool. And uh, for this film, they uh, followed a couple of different things. Uh, for one, they used the fable The Ant and the Grasshopper very loosely. Uh, for that, but mostly they really leaned into other influences for this movie. Uh, it is loosely based on uh, The Seven Samurai, by default also The Magnificent Seven, since Magnificent Seven is a cowboy remake of The Seven Samurai. But mostly it is uh, based on The Three Amigos. <coughs> yes. Any fans of The Three Amigos in here? Yeah. A couple of you, yeah. Uh, in fact, this is so much based on the Three Amigos. For one, it kind of follows the whole concept that the people that he gets it, that he thinks are warriors, actually have no skills whatsoever, <laughs> like the Three Amigos. But they actually quote the film. That's how much the people that created the movie love the Three Amigos. There are straight up lines <laughs> from the Three Amigos in this movie. All right, the easy part is done. On to the hard part. Although, you know, the the main thing, they've got hands up right there, Kate. The, the thing that everybody always says is that hands are the easiest thing to draw ever, right? Yeah, when it comes to art, people are like, oh, hands are so easy, hands and feet and faces, those are the easiest things in the whole world, right? Um, yeah, uh, they can be difficult. They're generally an artist's bane, which is a little bit weird because most of us have hands, and if you're bored, you can just draw your hand. And if you do that enough times, then you'll be really good at drawing hands. It's called practice. Um, if you ever really want to get good at something, just draw it a lot. That includes hands, which are readily available for you. Um, he is going to have opposable thumbs, like all caterpillars. <laughs> yeah, no, caterpillars don't have opposable thumbs. He has opposable thumbs, but he wears mittens. So he has these little red mittens, and that's what all of these little dashes are out here. These top curves are going to be the thumb, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace over that, and I'm going to pull this down, create kind of a letter S, which is going to curve out and run into this letter C, right out there. That looks kind of like a vague letter, uh, number three. And then I'm going to go back up the top, and I'm going to curve in. Now, on our thumbs, you know, we've got this little bump right here. This is what we're going to draw next, is the little bump on the thumb, which is going to run back to the circle. I'm going to pull this up at the bottom, and he wears puffy sleeves, like he's got a ski jacket on. Just like real caterpillars, you know, always wearing ski jackets. No. Um, I'm going to pull this in, and I'm going to cap this off. It's going to be where that sleeve is going to go, and then I'm going to draw a little curve on the inside of his mitten. The puffy sleeve goes all the way down to this blue guideline right here and actually curves up behind his roll. It curves over and comes down just behind the thumb. This follows through below it, just right here on the circle. And we create this a puffy sleeve. Just like that. I'm going to flip it and mirror it. So, same thing we did over here, we're gonna do it, mirror it over here, so start up here, get that thumb, that's gonna curve in, run out to that letter C, 
like so. It's going to curve back. Get that bump on the back of the thumb. And then cap it off. Here we get a little curve. And caterpillars have three pairs of segmented legs with tiny little claws on the ends of them. Um, but beyond that, they have a whole bunch of false legs uh, on their abdomen that don't do anything but help them cling to things. So it keeps them on their plants and on trees or whatever they happen to be on. It's all those little false legs on the inside. I'm going to curve from behind that thumb, curve down and slide into this blue guideline. All right. Then lined up with the bottom of this I'm over here, pull this around, right at the top of this blue guideline, and curve up, giving you that other puffy sleeve. He has segments, and segments, we're gonna start with a little curve, dipping down in between those arms. segment them out. This is going to carry up behind the arm over here and curve in to the side of the face. While we're over here, I can get a second curve ready to go. We're not going to draw that quite yet, though, because we need to draw the other arms. So, now he's got his hands down this way. So, once again, we go up here to get the thumb, pull this down to the blue guideline, and back up. Don't get too frustrated with this, guys. Remember, you can always use an eraser later. Draw a lot of lines over the top of it. Make it real sketchy. Curve here. Get that little bump on the back of the thumb. And then cap it off. And get that curve on the inside of the mitten. We got this blue line over here to show where the arm is attached. That's going to slide up behind this arm and curve down. Follow behind the mitten. Get that other little muff, that other little puffy sleeve. Then back over here, once again, this little curve is the thumb. Curve in, we're mirroring this side. Gonna drop down. Brace over that bottom. Letter U. Get that bump on the back of the thumb, and then cap it off. And we've got this blue guideline right here. This goes all the way up to touch the other arm, and all the way down to the circle. This curves over, slides in behind that line, and this one across the bottom. And now, the hard part is done. Now we take a brain break and we trace over this little spot of the circle there and this little spot of the circle there. And I've got this little spot down here. This, you don't really have to draw all this, but you can carry it over, maybe bring a little bit up over here by the glove. Pull this through the glove and up to the other glove. You can put another little one over here if you want to. And then we'll just draw some more segments kind of fading off. I'll go to the end of the mitten over here and draw a little segment, maybe a couple more going off to the left. The caterpillars are very important. They turn into butterflies, which are very, very important. Butterflies are pollinators. Uh, who in here uh, loves being able to eat food? Anybody? Anybody like uh, being able to consume nutrients and food? Yeah. Only three of you. Oh, okay. All right. The rest of you are like, only water for me. <laughs> um, so pollinators like, like um, butterflies and bees and actually, uh, actually some mosquitoes. Some of them are pollinators, crazy enough. Uh, they're really, really important to our ecosystem because they pollinate 
uh, plants that then grow into our fruits and vegetables. And not only do we eat those fruits and vegetables, the other things we eat eat those fruits and vegetables. So it's really, really important. Uh, some pollinators are going uh, extinct. They are on the endangered species list, like bumblebees. If they go away, we're going to lose a whole area of fruits and vegetables and no more honey. That would be sad, right? Um, so if you want to help save, uh, save any of these uh, lovely <coughs> pollinators, you can set up a nice little backyard habitat. If you've got a backyard, you can plant specific flowers and things that will attract things like butterflies, uh, other pollinators. If you live in a high-rise apartment, you can always get a window box and uh, put that outside of your window to attract butterflies and other pollinators. But that's going to be really, really important if we want to continue to have food, say, like decades from now, is to make sure those pollinators are still around. Uh, he has little circles, just little uh, imprints of circles. Um, <coughs> caterpillars have sphericals, which are little circles on their back. That's how they breathe. So they smell with their antenna, and they breathe with spiracles. It actually just pulls uh, the gases and the, and the air in through the spherical and out another spherical and processes it because they don't have lungs. Um, his are just for show, though. Um, his don't do that. We're just going to draw this little kind of letter J shape in here, get another little oval in there, maybe another one coming off the side. You can put them kind of running out there if you want to. But ultimately, you guys just drew I look. How do you feel? Did you guys have fun? Yeah. Awesome. Well, be proud of what you've done. Sign your beautiful Heimlich drawing. Now, we have nine classes each day, and this is not the Heimlich experience. Uh, this is the only time he's getting drawn today. Uh, so you can come back and you can learn all sorts of different characters, everybody from uh, other Bugs Life characters like Flick and Dot, all the way over to Bambi and uh, Dante, all sorts of different characters. But if you want to get really good, come back another day, find out where we're drawing Heimlich again, and take another Heimlich class. Because the more you draw the same thing over and over again, the better you get. You know what that's called? Practice. practice! Yes, practice doesn't make perfect though. Get that out of your head. You can't be perfect. You're human. But practice That's makes right. improvement. Practice makes you better. And if you do it a lot, practice makes you master of your craft. So practice is really important. Throw the date on there as well. Today is the 20th. Always date your work so you can track your progress as an artist from year to year from drawing to drawing and actually watch yourself improve. Uh, now those pencils, those pencils are yours to keep. They are a souvenir from us to you. Congratulations. Uh, if you want to, you can uh, flip your paper over, go on one of our walking trails. You can sketch our other animals, our kangaroos, our tigers, whatever happened to come out, although they're probably all hiding from the cold right now. Wait until it gets a little bit warmer and you might see more animals. You can sketch them on the back. Uh, but definitely, whatever you do, do not just throw those pencils away. We do have a recycling bin for you off to the right. You're all going to be exiting off to the right-hand side where we opened up all those ropes for you. There's a bin on that table that says pencil recycling. You can drop them in there. Uh, do that rather than dropping them on our floor or clipping them onto your boards or leaving them anywhere other than either putting them in your pockets or putting them into recycling. There's also a yellow bin to the left for paper. If you got extra paper, if you don't want to keep your drawings, whatever, you can recycle them to your left. Now, before you guys go, I want you guys to just really quickly think about the motto of the National Park System. Uh, national parks are fantastic. You can see lots of great butterflies and things in national parks as well, national forests. But does anybody know what the motto of the national park system is? Uh, I heard it. Yes, it's dump all of your trash on a trail and wait for bears to eat it. Right? <laughs> no, of course not. No, it is leave. No, trace. Yes, so I want you to think of this room like a national park. You can carry this with you all through Disney World. You can carry this with you at home or in your town, or anywhere that you go. Think about the model of the National Park System and leave no tricks. So I want you guys to make the next class believe that you were never here. So those boards were on the back of your seats when you came in. Put them back on the backs of the seats exactly how you found them. Uh, pick up your trash, your backpacks, your sunglasses, your cell phones, your children, anything you brought in with you. Take those with you and exit off to your right hand side. Put those going somewhere special like a refrigerator. And thanks again guys. Have a wonderful rest of your adventure here at Animal Kingdom. Bye bye everybody. Thank you all for joining us in the animation experience at Conservation Station. Please gather your personal belongings before exiting. And remember to take your... That was kind of fun.
chance to draw a Heimlich from a pug's life. I will show you what my Heimlich looks like a little bit later if you're interested in seeing. I didn't know Heimlich wore a puffy jacket, so that's an interesting thing I learned today. Rochelle said it was fun. It was fun. Brian said, thank you, Brian. You were welcome. Thanks for joining. We aren't done yet, though. We're going to spend a little bit of time here at Disney World Kingdom. Uh, we'll check out the affection section outside um, and um, maybe see if there's some activities going on here inside as well because it's kind of chilly. It's going to be inside. Barbara's interested to see. Okay, now you can't make fun of me because I am definitely not an artist. That is not my skill. But hey, they make it very easy to do um, one step at a time. So I will, I will give you a peek. Uh, but you got to stick around a little bit. And I've got to figure out how to get to where I want to go. You know what? We'll go to the affection section first and then come back in the building. Uh, actually, never mind. We're going to stay in the building and then we'll go outside. Amy Beth says it was fantastic. She drew with me. That's great. Peggy says it's time for a shameless plug. Peggy, thank you. Today you and you award my appreciation for prompting what is a never-ending series of shameless plugs for the Pin of the Month Club. If you or anyone you know would like a little bit of Disney fun delivered every single month, check out pinofthemonthclub.com. So it looks like the animal kitchen is open. Foods that we feed the animals here at Animal Kingdom. Uh, there's some herbivore pellets, some primate browse biscuits. Interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen this display before. Alfalfa hay cubes, low starch primate biscuits, low starch primate sticks. Interesting. question on the temperature today it's chilly it is 47 right now i call that officially cold and officially winter here in central florida dorothy hello to you said love the drawing class thank you for joining from taylor texas maryland says she's got 12 degrees yes that is real that is real winter right there we have florida winter it's cold for us because we have thin blood but up north you guys have real winter Peggy says, thanks for the Saturday broadcast. Happy to do it. Let's see, what do we have here? Okay, I'm sure we are looking at something. I'm just not sure what it is. Ah, there is a snake on that branch. It's very well hidden. But <clears throat> probably hard to see on the video. But right there, that's a snake. A very big snake, which I'm glad is on the other side of the class. Scott's got 19 in New Jersey. Okay, let's check out some invertebrates. Also can be hard to find. Giant thorny walking stick. Probably looks very stick-like. Amy's got one degree. Kathy, 10 degrees in Ohio. Very chilly. It makes me very happy we have 47. Okay, you can see some very, very interesting bug creatures back on the screen at the bottom of this display. Buster's got 32 in Hilton Head. Too cold. <laughs> Jackie, yes, we do have some stick bugs here. Ronnie, no water rides today. That is for sure. Too cold for that. Oh, yeah, there's a bug under a leaf down there in the bottom right-hand corner, it looks like. Very interesting creature. Blue death feigning beetle. Okay, I guess they're feigning death somewhere where I can't see them right now. Maybe as we continue the tour, we'll get to some bigger creatures we might be able to see a little bit better. Okay, reptiles. Okay, 
Kathy, hello to you. Susan said the bugs are cute. A desert rosy boa. I don't know. I don't see it. Uh, uh, I think he's. I think it's a snake curled up under the the rock work, right? right in there. It's pretty hard to see. All right. I'm going to skip some of these displays. We're going to see if we can get to some that might be a little bit bigger. Uh, it looks like there is an operation or some sort of procedure happening here in the operating theater. Tim Peterson, 15 degrees, a heat wave. <laughs> Tim, I hope you're doing well. So someone see in the monitor is holding some sort of creature which is getting a treatment. It's very interesting that they have this operating theater here where people can watch what's going on. Phil, 46 days to go. That may be a bird. Yeah, it looks like a bird. Interesting. So maybe the bird is getting a checkup. Maybe a manicure. <laughs> All right, let's go outside to the affection section and check out some of the animals there. Carol, good morning to you. Diane, just got back from Disney, 20 degrees on Long Island. Marsha, 36 in Salt Lake City. Thank you for being here. Early for you, I know. Melissa said the animal clinic views are awesome, very interesting. Karen said, hopes the bird's okay. Me too. Seemed like he was very with it. Susan has 84 in South Florida, quite a bit warmer than here, where it's 47. Peggy says, yes to some furry mammals. Yeah, let's go and check them out. Karen, five days to go. I hope you have a wonderful visit. Hello. That's right. Thank you. Wash your hands when you come back. Okay. All right, let's see. Ooh, looks like a. Is that a steer? Tracy, cold here, way below zero. John asked about going on the safari ride. I'm guessing there's going to be kind of a long line for that. And my battery's not, excuse me, not going to hold up for it. Okay. He looks like he's having a good day. Just kind of hanging out. Kathy's got five in Illinois. Robert says, do you need a reservation to do the animation experience? You do not. Uh, I did not get a Genie Plus or any sort of reservation. I just showed up for the first show. Um, a little bit of a slower period right now in mid to late January, so the crowds aren't so big. Um, but the theater does hold quite a few people, so I would say you, know, you might want to get there a little bit early. Um, but for the most part, I've never had a problem getting a seat. Uh, there's even some standing room around the back, which would not be as good for a drawing, but. You know, unless, unless it's an especially busy time, um, you're probably okay to do a walk-in. And the good thing is that if, if one show is full, you can hang out and check out some of the animals and then go back for the next one. Let's see what else we got over here. Beth, hello to you. Peggy, negative five in Chicago. Wow, that's cold. Alan said, this is like a mini safari. You're right. And it's not in a Jeep that moves quickly through the cold air. Sheep are kind of hanging out. Just doing a little bit of chewing. It's a good thing to do.
And we have goats. Goats are also doing some chewing too. I guess that's what animals do. Hi, DLO to you. Thank you for joining the live broadcast. We have a lot of goats here. Doing what goats do. But Junior said a nice stroll. Thank you. It's fun to be here with you. Thanks for joining me, spending a little bit of your Saturday. A very animal focused day with animated animals and some real animals too. Peggy says the sheep, they are a chillin'. Yes, they are. Tanya says they're cute. Keith says, is it time for a shiny, heartwarming, shameless plug? <laughs> it is in today you win the award, my appreciation. If you or anyone you know would like a little bit of Disney fun delivered to your home every single month, check out pinofthemonthclub.com. Uh, it looks like mostly sheep, goats, a donkey. Karen says the goats love to climb. Yeah, I did see the goat on top of a table. This one is doing a bit of breakfast chomping here. Melissa said, how about a shirt plug? Melissa, that's a good idea. So there are quite a few designs over at worldofwaltstore.com where you can get a link to the t-shirt shop. Don't have a new design for you this week. Actually, don't have any in the hopper right now, but there are plenty of previous designs available. All right, let's take a stroll uh, back down towards the train, and we'll take that towards Africa. The train ride's always a little fun. Kathy, hello to you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Jeffrey said, goats on the roof. Goats do like to climb. Robert says, how do we get a countdown calendar? Robert, thank you for asking. So the Magical Countdown calendar is available over at MagicalCountdown.com, or you can find a link to it at WildOfWaltStore.com. And the countdown calendar allows you to count down the number of days until your next Walt Disney World trip up to 365 with great tips, um, fun games for the kiddos, great way to build excitement. Um, and a lot of the information for that calendar came from you here on the broadcast. So thank you for uh, participating. And uh, for those of you who might be having a trip coming up anytime in the next year or two, you might want to check out MagicalCountdown.com. All right, we have a pollination garden. Actually, it looks nice with lots of impatiens and other various flowers. John said, I didn't wash my hands. I didn't, but I didn't touch anything either, so I think it's okay. All right, back to the train we go. Tanya said, yay, a train ride. David, hello to you in Long Island, New York. Hope you're doing well, staying warm. Ruth said, how many years have I been doing this? Oh, that's a good question. I would say, uh, uh, I'm not even sure when Facebook Live came out. So the World of Walt website has been around probably 13 or 14 years at this point. Um, the live broadcasts started pretty much as soon as Facebook Live came out. Uh, I'm not sure how long that's been. Probably, I don't know, just wild guessing, seven or eight years. It's been fun. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun getting to meet people, say hello, um, share a little bit of Disney with everybody. So, really enjoy it. Kathy says, loves her magical countdown calendar. Now she needs a countdown. <laughs> That's good. You can have a, a countdown calendar without a countdown. You can sort of pretend. Or just save it for when you got one. Linda says, a nice little garden. All I have there is snow. Happy to bring you some January flowers. 
Well, those flowers might be hurting a little bit. Uh, it's pretty chilly here. Bill, hello to you. Happy Saturday. Robin said 2016. Thank you for that. It's been a good eight years. Petunia said quite a while. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun. Larry says, looks like we got some sunshine. It is a chilly, crisp morning, but we do have some sunshine, which does help. Adam says, favorite memory from doing a Facebook Live? That's a good question. Uh, you know, I have a hard time picking a favorite of anything, not a favorite food, not a favorite color, but I can tell you one that I really did like. Uh, with, so there was a gentleman who wanted to propose to his fiance on Main Street, USA. Uh, and he called me, so I would, he wanted to do it on Saturday morning. He wanted to do it on the broadcast so the families could watch. And he called me like one or two days in advance, like, whew, we've gotten like, pretty close. But uh, I actually did find him on Main Street. And he got down on one knee and he proposed to his fiance. And she said yes, thankfully. Uh, that was a very special special moment to be part of that uh, time in their lives. So something I really enjoyed. I also love it when people stop by and say hello. Uh, it happens every couple of weeks or so. And it's a big encouragement to me. Just really nice for people to take a bit of their vacation time to do that. Lauren says, nice weather today. I just got back. <laughs> John said, crisp equals wicked cold. Yeah, that's the code word. I mean, you, you cracked it. This is true. Tracy says, love seeing the green. John says, a great memory on the engagement. That was a good one. Alan says, he watched the proposal. All right. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, that was, that was pretty special. Carla says, remember watching the proposal? Anne Marie remembers it well. Yeah, that was a that was a good one for sure. I own a cold day in Disney is better than a day not in Disney. There you go. Cold and snowy in northeast Ohio. Petunia, thank you for being here. It's good to see you. Ah, the train cometh. Train stopped a little short. Tracy said, great music. I kind of noticed that too, it is nice music. <laughs> Debbie says, watch out for falling iguanas. We don't have those around here in Orlando, but I have heard of them before. Jeff saw the proposal, Jim remembers right, the proposal we're episode. Be this way, up to the side, these doors will be closed. Right after me, crank back up the train. <laughs> <laughs> Run out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> and out of gas. And it's an electric train, but imagine uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it has the cold weather sometimes uh, affects it. And it's like, nope, I'm not going in that station. I'm shutting off. <laughs> but we have a capable engineer. Oh, that's interesting. I did not realize that the train was electric. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Dewanda says, remember, we want to see the drawing, please. Oh, yes. Okay, so here it is, my work of art. My Heimlich right there. I think some of the puffy sleeves got a little bit weird. Um, his eyes, there's a lot of detail in those eyes in a very small space. But okay, there it is. So I'm not very much of an artist, but actually the cast member does a great job of helping you to follow step by step. Uh, this is interesting. I don't remember a lot of animation experiences where they already had the guidelines pre-drawn on the, the paper, which helped a bunch. Jeff says, how do you get back if the train breaks down? I was kind of wondering the same thing. I've got to imagine that there's a bus backup route if needed. I did see some signs of life over here. 
Thank so you. we have audio. So once we start up the train, we also need to start up the audio. Conductor has to relay that to the engineer, and then she can move. Oh, so okay. It's a whole long procedure. Yeah. Safety first, right? Safety is first, yeah. Uh -huh. Barbie says, looks great. Thank you for that. Ellen said, did amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, Ellen, that's a great picture. Robert as well. Thank you. I, uh, I racked that up to the very careful and deliberate instructions. Terry says, came out great. Dan said, great job. Thank you. Appreciate that. Ah, the train cometh. Carol, thank you for that. Uh, Jeffrey says, do you walk to the train from where you are? So, um, when you're in the Africa section, you, there's one train station, and then back here in the affection section, there's a second train station. The train connects the two. And then you walk from the trains, uh, train station in the, uh, I don't know what you call this, sort of this, this back area of Fiki's Planet Watch. Uh, you walk down a trail to get to the place where the hospital is and the animation experience is, where the affection section uh, are as well, is as well. Tracy said, electric vehicles don't like the cold, even our hybrid is like that. Uh, interesting, good to know. John says, amazing how calming the walkabouts are. Thank you, John. I'm glad you can be here. Thank you for joining me. I always appreciate your comments. Thanks to everyone for your comments, your likes, especially those shares. Great way to get the word out. Jeffrey says, if it breaks down, how do you get back to the other station? I don't know, but I have to think that Disney has considered this possibility. And there's probably some sort of bus that could take people if needed. That was that's my guess. I don't know. That's my guess. Yeah, I learned something new that the train is electric. I've never really smelled any fumes from it, but um, yeah, now I know. Wayne says time for a draw for it's probably a good idea. Hot chocolate sounds pretty good right now. Christine says people are definitely bundled up for sure. It is a cold day. Up to 49 now. It's still cold. Tim Peterson, all aboard. All righty, young ones have to be seated, buddy, okay? You have to be seated with your back up against the bench, okay? Thank you. Peggy said the batteries are probably not digging cold. It's so true. Make sure you folks don't fall out. Yeah, that says, look at the winter hats. I know, that's not something you see a lot here. A few weeks a year. Greetings, friends, and welcome aboard the Wildlife Express. We hope you enjoyed your visit to Rafiki's Planet Watch. We are now beginning our return trip to the African town of Harambe. For your safety, please remain seated and keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the train. Sit all the way back against the bench, and please, be sure to watch your children. Bienvenidos. Comenzamos ahora nuestro viaje de regreso a la aldea africana de Arambe. Para su seguridad, permanezcan sentados con las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del tren. Siéntense hasta atrás pegados al respaldo de la banca. Y por favor, vigilen a los niños. Gracias. As several people are commenting that 49 is pretty cold for Florida. It, it is for sure. Maybe once or twice a year, overnight, we will dip down into the lower 30s and flirt with freezing, uh, which is normally big news. People have to cover their plants. But uh, yeah, 30s, 40s, that's cold. <laughs> Susan said, too cold for shorts. For me, definitely. But for people up north, this might be like summertime. Christine better than minus eight. Yikes. Christine.
pristine 20 at Niagara Falls. 47 would be like a heat wave. Yeah, that is a, a good point. <laughs> George says, how about a Dole Whip? So no, I think that the Dole Whip uh, stand is probably not doing really any business today. Welcome aboard the Wildlife Express with a service from Rafiki's Planet Watch to the village of Harambe. As you head back out into Disney's Animal Kingdom, we hope you take with you a great appreciation for the very journey that led us here. You see, it was Walt Disney's passion for animals and conservation that led him to send film crews across the globe to capture dramatic footage of wildlife in remote locations. Walt Disney's True Life Adventure series touched the hearts of millions of viewers, inspiring a spirit of conservation and paving the road for the nature documentaries we see today. That same power eventually inspired the creation of Disney Nature, the latest continuation of this wildlife storytelling tradition. With the release of powerful films like African Cats, Born in China, and Penguins, Disney Nature creates a unique opportunity to connect with wildlife on an emotional level, inspiring us to preserve nature through care and understanding. And, did you know that each film provides an opportunity for filmgoers to become conservationists just by seeing the films? A portion of the first week's ticket sales for each Disney Nature release is directed through the Disney Conservation Fund to support specific conservation initiatives with nonprofit organizations around the globe. A lot of people are saying it would take 40 to 90 degrees over their temperatures, which would be better. The idea of Disney's Animal Kingdom, a place that celebrates our deep connection with animals, the magic of nature, and wonder of exploration that comes from preserving and protecting our natural world. As you venture out into the park or make your way back to wherever you call home, remember that legacy lives in you. We are now approaching the Harambe train station. For your safety and the safety of those around you, please sit all the way back here the bench and avoid leaning out toward the rail. You'll be seated until the train comes to a complete stop, and please be sure to watch your children as you exit. Go well, and remember, preserving the magic of nature begins with you. Asante. I think he's voting for an Irish coffee. Sounds like a good idea. Someone was asking if a bus runs from the Orlando International Airport to Disney Resorts. So Disney Magical Express, which used to be a free service that Disney provided for people staying on Disney property, is no longer happening. Um, there are, though, independent services that you can purchase. Uh, and you can always take a cab or Uber. Wayne says, car rental for the win. There you go. Tanya's a fan of the train ride. All right, we are back in Harambe. We're gonna take a little bit of a tour around before we wrap up for today. You know, like all the Disney parks, there are always a lot of details. And this is one of the great ones all through Animal Kingdom, especially in the Africa and the Asia section, all these sort of local advertisements that were supposedly put up on the buildings, and it looks like they have been here for a long time, which actually at this point they have been, but they looked like this on the first day the park opened as well. So traditional African songwriting do you ever think you may enjoy a sausage? Famous sausages, delicious, curried style in Harambe. Five stars. <laughs> I like how, like, sausage, is that a sausage on a stick in the middle there? I think so. Ivory Poachers Beware, so sort of tying back to the original storyline for the Kilimanjaro Safari, which was a poaching storyline. Disco Disco, with One Love Concerts, presented by three stars at Civics Club on Kunjufu Street. Very fun. 
And here's one for a restaurant that actually exists here in the park, Tusker House. J.M. Moyo Recycle Bead Jewelry. Necklaces, bracelets, and earrings. Very cool. There's J.M. Moyo, and it's like J.M. Moyo is here as well. Larry's a fan of the Disney trains. Okay, and here we are back at the train station in Harambe, the Africa section of Disney's Animal Kingdom. It was kind of fun to take the train. It's a, a very interesting train design because it looks out one way, which definitely allows Disney to sort of control the view. And many times behind you are backstage areas, which kind of look like warehouses or cement block buildings, not necessarily so exciting. But on the part of the train that does look out, they can make sure that there's plenty of nature and things to see. Adam says, best part is Saturday. Adam, thank you so much. It's so nice of you to say. Wayne says, find a Joffrey's. I may do that. I, I could see a hot tea or maybe even a hot chocolate. I haven't had a hot chocolate yet this season in my future. All right, we are back in Harambe. Gwen says, loves all the train rides. Carla says, thank you, love today's experience. Thank you for joining. Sandy says, fun and different Disney experience. I think that's what that said, just went by kind of quick. It was fun. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of cool to, to do the drawing experience. It's amazing to see that, uh, you know, you start with basically a blank sheet of paper, in this case with two guidelines. And after a half hour, you have a fully drawn character and, and as I said before, the cast member makes it so easy to follow along. You just do one step at a time. And in the end, even somebody like me, who has no artistic capabilities, can come up with something that's pretty recognizable. Peggy is again voting for the Irish coffee. I like how you think, Peggy. Susan said, fun, fun train ride. Mike says, short wait for the water ride. Yeah, I can imagine you probably just walk right on uh, Collier River Rapids today. It's even operating. It might be people who come from Alaska and think this is summertime. Robin, you are very welcome. Thank you for joining me. Christine says, thank you. For the help on the bus question, you're welcome. Robert says, Florida does not have snow. This is true. It is a good thing. Alice says, makes her Saturday. Thank you for that. Tanya says, hot chocolate with whipped cream and some chocolate shavings on top. I like the way you think. That sounds great to me. Kathy says, loves the magic on Saturday mornings. Thank you for being here. So, Tamu Tamu, people were talking about Dole Whip. I'm not going to stop and get one. It looks like some people might be, although maybe they're getting something else here. So Dole Whip Pineapple Orange Soda Float sounds good. Pineapple Hard Cider Float. Mm. That might uh, warm your cockles, whatever cockles are. Dole Whip Pineapple Cup. Dole Whip Pineapple Juice. Pineapple Crisp Sundae. All kinds of ice cream options here. They all sound really good. Phil said, great podcast. Thank you for that. Hey, look, the wait, not very long at all. I think they might even be getting something warm, like a pretzel. <laughs> the ice cream machine is probably not doing overtime today. Oh, yeah, so colossal Mickey cinnamon roll. I think that's maybe what people are getting. Sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. That sounds good. Guava and cream cheese danish. Honey pistachio croissant and a chocolate twist. They all sound wonderful. I'll take one of each, please. All right, everybody. I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for joining me here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. It was uh, fun to do the animation experience, take the train from Rafiki's Planet Watch back here to Harambe in Africa. Uh, thank you all for your very kind comments. I always enjoy chatting with you, hearing about your temperatures, and sharing what we have here in Central Florida and in Walt Disney World.
It's been uh, great as always. Um, look forward to talking to you next week. And until next time, God bless.